mistake. You know how at the beginning of January you set a Goodreads challenge with the greatest of intentions and then by January 27th you're four books behind because you may have been somewhat unrealistic with your ambition? Yeah, we're, we're kind of- we're-, we're we're in that situation right now. You know, it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna get through it together. We're gonna read seven books in seven days to solve the problem that I have created for myself. And to spice it up, we're reading seven books from seven countries in seven days because it'll help me with my challenge, my my read a book from every country challenge, which is currently an ongoing thing. That's what's happening this week. It is currently Friday. I'm starting a weekly challenge on a Friday because I'm a psychopath. Just wait for Monday, Rose. No, I'm working on Monday. Sorry. So I've picked uh, seven of the shortest books I could find and we're gonna read them together and we're gonna have a great time. So it's already 7 p.m. So I think I'll start with a short one. I might go for Chess, which is my pick for Austria. I'm quite excited about it. I've heard good things. Um, and also I've been playing a lot of chess at the moment as has the rest of the world. So yes, we'll start with chess. We'll see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I finished chess, started and finished chess, very short, uh, but very good, I'll talk more about it later, and then also I started this graphic novel, which is very pretty, but a little bit hard to follow, I think. It's Saturday, I have work later tonight, so I'll probably be reading quite late when I get home. Uh, but that's fine. That's kind of when I thrive. I'm in a tree. Hello, it is Sunday, January 29th. Got home from work at almost 11 p.m. last night, so I did not get much reading done. I did get a free burrito. So, you know, hospitality, it has its flaws, but it has its perks. Anyway, I am about this far through Aya, the graphic novel set in the Ivory Coast, or Le Côte d'Ivoire. Um, I did take high school French, thank you for asking. The art is very pretty, but the I just don't really care about the characters. Maybe I'll 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 care more as we go along, but I I don't know if I'm the target demographic of this book, but it's interesting anyway, and it's it is very pretty as I mentioned. <laughs> I worked like six shifts in a row. <laughs> so we just stripped down to our jocks. Yeah. And, this is and I'm like, <gasps> <laughs>
Aya, the graphic novel. Uh, my Too Long Didn't Read review is uh, pretty odd, but not for me. And then I started this, I got like 16 pages in and then I fell asleep because it was very late at night. This is So Long A Letter by Mariam Abba. So Long A Letter is a cry from the heart of a Muslim woman. It recalls her love for her husband and the shattering sense of betrayal she feels when he abruptly takes a second wife. Uh, this is one some awards, this has a good good reviews, good reputation. I'm excited. Good so far really reminds me of um, a lot of cultural similarities with the book I read for the Gambia, which makes sense because this is Senegal. They're basically right next to each other. In fact, Senegal kind of Pac-Man's the Gambia. Anyway, so today we're going to finish this and then probably start another book. Uh, I am working tonight though, so we'll see how we go. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm finding it a little bit hard to follow. There's a lot of characters uh, with similar names. I'm about halfway through, um, and it's good. It's very, like, very literary. But yeah, I'm just struggling a little bit. I think I'm just maybe not as focused as I need to be. So Long A Letter and then I started The Horse Walks Into A Bar by David Grossman. So Long A Letter, I feel like I needed to be in a different headspace to read. It was very literary and contemplative and I don't know. I struggled through it even though it was, you know, less than a hundred pages. So then I started, then I started A Horse Walks Into A Bar and, and I flew through the first 60 pages and then I was like, it's 2 a.m. I need to sleep. But it was really, really good about this like unhinged comedian. <laughs> Doing a, doing a stand-up show and there's an old friend there and it's very, it's very easy to read, very like fast-paced, no chapters or anything, it just keeps going and going and it's really, it's really good, I'm enjoying it. So uh, we'll finish that today, hopefully. I've got a open mic tonight, uh, but I can do some reading before and after that. <laughs> day of the challenge. Last night I finished A Horse Walks Into A Bar by David Grossman. It was very, very good. I was thinking about five stars. I landed on four. Really great. Really fast paced. Very funny, but very emotional as well. Uh, yeah, really loved it. So this evening we are gonna smash out three books because I am bad at time management and that's just where we've landed. So we've got The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, my Lebanon pick. We've got A Pattern of Islands by Arthur Grimble for Kiribati. And then we have Season of Migration to the North. So all pretty short, all pretty, uh, 
pretty slim volumes, so I think we will be able to do this tonight. It might be a late one, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to get through these because because um, The Prophet and Season of Migration to the North, both I've heard very good things about. And then this book is just very pretty. Like, look at this man and his face being sucked off by an octopus. Isn't that fabulous? So that's the plan for this evening. Um, we'll see how we go. Very pretty, very, uh, some very quotable moments here. It's about this dude who, like, says stuff, <laughs> drops some truth bombs, and then sails away. It's a good time. I think I might go for a run. It's nearly nine o'clock, so there's a little bit of light left, and then I shall come back and we shall finish the remaining two books. I just got back from running about 4Ks in about half an hour-ish, so nothing blisteringly fast, but it was very nice to, uh, you know, go and see the ocean. I am now all cozy in my pajamas. We're going to go for a Patten of Islands first. I don't think this should take me particularly long. I think it's kind of aimed at children, because this is a school edition. And then we will finish with Season of Migration to the North, um, and I will check in tomorrow and we'll do a recap of all the books and what I thought. Let's get into it. fully annotated. Look at this. Just the whole way through. Which I don't mind. It'll probably help me uh, <laughs> understand it a bit better. Alright, so I have finished all of the books. Finally. <laughs> First book was Chess by Stefan Zweig. About this group of people on a ship to Argentina. And there's like all these rumors that the world chess champion is on board this ship. The protagonist and a couple of others are like we gotta play this dude. So they do, and they lose terribly, and then they play him again. A random, like, stranger in the crowd suggests, like, all these brilliant moves, and they end up drawing the world champion, which the draw may not sound super exciting, but in chess, drawing the world champion is a pretty significant deal. And then the protagonist goes to find this stranger who suggested the brilliant moves, and learns about his backstory, which is very interesting. So it's kind of a book about chess, but it's mostly a book about like s solitary confinement <laughs> and the human brain and how obsession can be extremely dangerous. I really liked it. I gave it four stars. The second book I read was Aya by Margaret Ovoet and Clement Aubrey. Uh, this is a coming of age like graphic novel set in 1980s Ivory Coast, which was during kind of an economic boom and a lot of European influence, there's a lot of mention of Paris, um, and it's about a young female protagonist kind of dealing with the goings-on of the people around her. It is mostly about people having sex with people who they should not have sex with, which is not the most exciting <laughs> plot to me personally. Yeah, I just struggled to connect with the characters. I think there wasn't really an introduction, we just kind of got straight into it, and I kind of was having trouble figuring out who was who and what was what. But the art is very pretty, so I gave it three stars. <laughs> Next I read So Long a Letter by Mariam Abba. This is 
a newly widowed woman writing letters to her friend, basically, discussing bits and pieces of life and doing lots of reflection on various things, uh, mostly, mostly the trauma of uh, her husband taking their daughter's friend as a second wife, like, out of the blue all of a sudden, and kind of the ramifications and impact of that and how she dealt with that. It didn't blow me away, but it was very interesting, uh, especially culturally. Three stars. Then I read A Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman. This was the longest book I read, but I think it took me the uh, least amount of time. There's no chapters or anything, it just flows the whole way. It's, it's all all in one night. It's all a stand-up comedy show, so it's lots of dialogue, lots of fast-paced kind of jokes and stuff. So this comedian calls up an old friend um, and asks him to come and watch his stand-up show, and that show quickly derails into just stories of childhood trauma, and it gets progressively more unhinged as the night goes on, which was quite fun. <laughs> it's a complete, like, emotional roller coaster. like, we deal with all sorts of stuff but kind of through the lens of comedy. It was a very, very interesting read. It was- it, I was teetering on the five stars, but we, we've settled on four. Then I read The Prophet by Gibran. Uh, very short, very quick. It's about a prophet uh, and he's about to leave a village to go on some sort of voyage. And all the people in the village ask him for his wisdom and he gives them their wisdom and that's the whole story pretty much. Yeah, there's not like much of a narrative but it is very poetic and like pretty. <laughs> uh, and I would like to like reread it and take notes on some some different aspects because there was some stuff in here that was really cool. Some of it was kind of a bit boring and kind of preachy but overall I liked it. I gave this four stars. And I read A Pattern of Islands by Arthur Grumble. Uh, it's about this young English dude who volunteers to go to Kiribati to like be a, what is he? To be a district officer. And and um, as you can imagine, he it's a bit of a it's a bit different to his native England when he gets there to these equatorial islands. Uh, and it's mostly just kind of short, quirky like travel stories about um, a lot of indigenous culture and also just a lot of interesting situations in which he finds himself. And I have actually read another travel memoir about Kiribati by um, by Martin Troost. He went in like modern day, um, so it was interesting drawing comparisons and seeing what has changed uh, over the years and a lot has changed over the years in Kiribati so that was cool as well. What stood out to me most was how anyone like survived at all because the medical there was no there was like no doctor they just like had all these 1920s diseases and no one to treat them and no medicine or anything so I don't really know how anyone survived at all. I think he had dysentery for like two thirds of the book, like it was pretty gnarly. But yeah, I enjoyed this, I gave it three stars. And we finished with Season of Migration to the North by Tayyab Sili. Um, it's about this man who returns from studying abroad in England to his Sudanese village and there's this mysterious stranger who now lives in his village and this stranger discloses a lot of dubious information about his past to our protagonist um, and then promptly disappears and leaves our protagonist to sort of deal with uh, the mess that he has made. <laughs> I didn't really understand what was going on the whole time. This was a little bit challenging. I think seven books in seven days, this maybe wasn't the one to finish on. I think this required a bit more brain power than I really gave to it. So I gave it three stars, but I would like to maybe reread this in the future and take a bit more time with it because there was some good stuff in here. Anyway, that is that. That is the seven books from seven countries in seven days. I'm a bit tuckered out, so I'm gonna leave ya. Thank you for watching. I'll see you. I'll see you later.